Hey everyone, I hope you all are safe and doing good. So in this video, I'm going to tell you how to answer questions in a technical round. Means this is one of the most, most important interview tips that will definitely help you if you follow this. Right. See, generally we say that like from freshers, they ask a basics. They don't want to go too into that much deep. They want that a fresher should know the basics and all and he should be like adaptable of learning new things. That's it. Right. Now, when they ask basic questions, see, definitely if they want to check your basics, they ask basic questions. But it depends how they filter out students because everybody knows, most of the students knows, you know, answer of basic questions. Right. So, how you answer that question? So, on that basis, they are going to filter out. Let me just give you one example for this. Suppose there are two students. There are two students. One is Rahul. But before that, let me just remind you, I have launched a new course, Mastering Data Structure and Algorithm with Java. And that has already been started from 19th of September. But you can join right now because today is the last day to avail the uh, extra early bird discount offer. That is extra 10% discount if you use the code BEST500. But this offer is valid for today only. And there you will get, if you join now, you will get previous lectures also. Recorded previous lectures and PPTs, notes, quizzes, assignments, and many more things, projects, case studies, and we'll be covering in this course, right? So, you will get everything of the previous lectures also, recorded lectures, right? So, uh, you can join now. The link is in the description and in, as well as in the pinned comment. And second is Jia. So, suppose the interviewer asks simple question, they both are fresher, like what is a variable? So, obviously, this is very basic question. But how they answer this question? Suppose Rahul say, variable is a container that stores some data value. Or variable is just a named memory location. Right? And let's suppose Rahul is given example. We take a variable like int a and then I can store some value. So in memory, a is just a container. Their value is stored and this, this is having some memory location. Suppose 100. Suppose 100 but location is something in hexadecimal from the address. So, A is just a named memory location, name of this memory location and we can access this variable with the help of the variable name only, right? You just, in system.out.println, I'm explaining this in the context of Java or in C, we just print like, uh, what, uh, printf to print the value or in C++, we print like C out, okay? So, like S-O-U-T or system.out.println, S-O-P, okay? In short form, I'm, I'm writing. So we just print this A. So you know the name of the variable, you can directly access the value because it's the headache of compiler. The compiler will search in the thousands memory cells, where is this address, the value of this variable and it will give you the value. That is headache of compiler, right? Okay, simple. Now same question would be asked from Jia. Jia will say like, yeah, obviously, variable is a named memory location and or you can say it's a container which contains some data value, right? But apart from this, Jia has added like variables are also basically in, fall in two categories or two types. One is primitive and second one is reference. Primitive means these kind of variables. They store primitive values, primitive like int, float, char, double, boolean. These are primitive data types, right? I'm explaining this in the context of Java, right? But reference are what in both in C and C++, uh, both in, sorry, both in C++ and Java we have, like, but in reference variable, what they store, they store references or like addresses, okay. Now, reference means what, suppose we have uh, this kind of thing, we have string name is equal to Jenny. So, obviously, this name is also a variable of type string. But string is not a primitive data type. String in Java, it's like a class. And when you create like an object, it's like an object. Obviously, name is a variable, but it's like an object of this class. So, this name contains reference to this Jenny, not the actual value Jenny. The reference to the first, you can say the base address or to the first character, the reference. Right. Same when you are creating, suppose there is a class class student and in this class I am having some data members and some methods. So when you create object of this class like student 
how you create student here name of the object suppose s is equal to new and then the constructor default constructor this is default constructor right so s is also see can you relate this with this int a same here name of the variable type here also its name and here type is student it's not primitive type student student is of class type class is like it's user defined data type you can say something like this right like struct we have user defined data type in c okay so this is also like a variable or we call it an object but this contains reference of the object you have created of this student class this will not contain the actual value something like 10 or jenny or anything not such kind of fixed value but this kind of variable contains reference this s contains reference of an object that would be created of the student class and how much memory would be allocated that depends on how much members this class have and which type of members this class have right so variables are also basically just of two types primitive as well as reference so who is you know having more, i mean who will be given more preference jia or rahul obviously jia because rahul had just explained the simple things everybody 99% of the students know this thing variable is a container that contains a data value or it's a named memory location and this example that's it but jia has gone a little bit deep primitive variables also reference variables also this is also variables we can say type of variables okay this kind of this is also variable this is also name of a variable this is also name of a variable but they, they these variable contain references and primitive variable contains like this they contains primitive values in float care whatever primitive values or primitive data type we have in particular language right so yeah the question was basic what is a variable but have you answer this question how much knowledge you have about that basic concept that will play an important role and on this basis they are going to filter out now maybe maybe interview will select jia and obviously rahul will say my answer was also correct and yeah he is right his answer is also correct but how much in how much deep you know about that basic concept that depends okay so it's not like that you know the basic concept and that's it try to go in a little bit further in that basic concept as well right now there is one more concept like wraps around let me just give you one more example for that there is one concept here wraps around this is also in you know any many programming languages c c++, c++ c++ or java right now wraps around concept is what suppose let's give let's me just in java because i am teaching you right now java so i am giving you the answer in this context int variable int range is in java int range is 2 raised to power 31 to 2 raised to power 31 minus 1 so if you you know uh, calculate this evaluate this so it will be minus 2147483 and 48 2 plus 21 Four seven four eight three six and four seven. I hope the range is correct. You can check out. Right. So this is the range of int. And if I print something like this, int a is equal to two one four seven four eight three six four seven. And if I print this a using this system dot out dot print ln, I'm not writing it in complete form. This is this is the given the shortcut small form so it will print this value work fine but if i update this thing if i write here 8 it is out of range it will give error yeah that's correct it will give error but one more one more uh, i have modified this thing a little bit it's 4 7 and then i have written a is equal to like a plus 1 and then i am printing this a what do you think what answer you will get Obviously, it's 4, 7, the maximum range, the highest, you know, positive number. And I'm adding one more. So, will it give 2, 1, 4, 7, 4, 8, 3, 6, 4, 8? Because that would be out of range. So, it should give error. Or it will print something else. 
it will not give any error you know what it will print it will print minus and this number i mean this number the negative this number so this is the concept of basically wraps around so now you should know these basic detail everybody knows range of an int and everybody knows if you print out of range maybe it will give like definitely it will give like error you are printing out of range or something like this but not it, it is not true in all the cases there are some cases where wraps around concept comes into picture right like in this con in this case it will not give any error it will print minus this value but why minus this value right so this is the thing you have to go a little bit further or a little bit deep when you are going for basics also right and that's exactly will make a difference in interview if you explain if you don't give the simple uh, definition that everybody knows and that is in the book and that is in the internet if you give that definition yeah obviously everybody knows and you are same within that crowd only but if you tell them something extra about that yeah then definitely you will stand out from the crowd right so if you want me to upload like more video on this concept also wraps around then you can just let me know in comment section like wrap you can just write down wraps around video and i'll upload that video so what is this concept right this is also in c c++ and java right in all the languages fine now i just want to tell you if you want to join like my uh, data structure with java course has already been started from 19th of september and uh, there i have uploaded some videos i'm going to cover everything like like this in deep everything java then dsa then we, you will be uh, getting ppts handwritten notes as well in detail handwritten notes right and some quizzes projects case studies and many more things we are going to covering in this in that course right but uh, let me just remind you the coupon code best 500 is going to expire today only so you have the last day to register to get this extra 10% discount otherwise from tomorrow onwards the price is going to change right so there that uh, course is about data structure and algorithm with java right so the link you will get in the description box and the pinned comment as well if you want to check out you can check out right now that's it for this video now i'll see you in the next video till then bye bye take care